Welcome to the Physician's Financial Checkup Podcast, where we discuss the financial challenges and opportunities facing medical professionals. In this podcast, we'll discuss a variety of financial topics that are important to physicians, such as retirement planning, investing, and estate planning. We will also interview experts in the financial services industry to get their insights on these topics. If you're a physician or a spouse of a physician, I encourage you to listen to this podcast. We will provide you with the information you need to make sense down financial decisions and achieve your financial goals. Here's your host, Brent Bowden, a financial coach and certified financial planning advisor with over 15 years of experience helping medical professionals achieve their financial goals. To learn more about Brent Bowden and his services, visit brentbowden.com. Welcome to the Physician's Financial Checkup Podcast. I'm your host, Brent Bowden, and excited to have you join us today as we do a deep dive into a concept called the virtual family office. So how can it serve the unique financial needs of high net worth medical professionals? On today's episode, we're going to explore what a virtual family office is, what's its advantages, potential disadvantages, as well as the key professionals who may play a crucial role in managing the finances of medical professionals. So let's get started. So first things first, what is a virtual family office? In the financial world, a family office typically refers to a dedicated team of professionals who manage the wealth, investments, and various financial affairs of ultra high net worth individuals and families. Think the Rockefellers uh, or the Waltons. However, not everyone has access to that traditional family office. And this is where the concept of a virtual family office really comes into play, is you may have assets and uh, liabilities, business that you want to make sure you're getting the right advice from multiple directions, but don't have access to either pay the fees or the costs involved. So what a virtual family office does is mimic a lot of those same priorities, but in a tailored financial management solution that brings together a network of already specialized professionals to meet those needs of high net worth individuals, very similar to a lot of medical professionals, on a more flexible uh, and cost-effective approach that provides a lot of the same benefits of a traditional family office without the need for a dedicated uh, physical staff in one space, kind of working on just one family or a a few families, and allows them to be able to, to create that same type of environment but for a a higher net worth client, but not the ultra high net worth. So let's explore just a few of the advantages and potential disadvantages of a virtual family office. So some of the advantages, we'll start out with just, first of all, the the customization. So you get a holistic wealth management experience. So a virtual family office really provides that comprehensive approach. It's very personalized uh, to the financial management needs taking account uh, any unique financial situations, businesses, what goals, risk tolerance, and not just of uh, the the initial uh, moneymaker, but it may take that of the kids, grandkids, multiple generations as well. And so that tailored approach uh, will also consider a lot more aspects than just what a normal financial advisor does. You may also have obviously finances included, like investments, but you may also have tax planning, estate planning, Uh, philanthropic needs, even potentially lifestyle management. And so there's a number of pieces that go into that holistic wealth management approach for a virtual family office. Second is cost efficiency. So virtual family offices can be more cost effective than traditional uh, for a lot of different reasons. They become more accessible for high net worth individuals that can access still a top tier of financial experts without having the overhead costs of maintaining a physical office uh, where all of those professionals are in one spot dedicated to you. They work together though, as a, as a team. So that brings us to number three, you will get a still an expert team of professionals bringing together a diverse group of professionals that aren't in the same office location every day can also bring some nice advantages. So obviously they're specializing in a specific area that, will allow you to kind of create that team, ensuring the best talent. Uh, A lot of times they will work together, but have not always the exact same goals. 
So they'll be able to discuss exactly what aspects of your financial life are aligned with those goals with an objective opinion. So a very fiduciary approach to how they're managing your overall financial needs. Uh, obviously, access, accessibility and communication can be a big thing. So we've seen through, obviously, uh, the last several years, the virtual family office model can use technology to provide real-time access to uh, a plethora of financial information, allowing clients to be informed, uh, make great decisions, and have a, a number of people that know what those decisions are so that if something comes up and you have a quick question, uh, you can reach out to, to multiple people through various communication tools. The fifth one is asset protection, which is critical for medical professionals. Protecting assets, uh, specifically in today's litigious world, uh, can be one of those things that we want to make sure that your entire team is looking at. So not only your ability to work and make money, uh, but obviously your property, uh, your ability of liability through work, um, making sure that all those things are protected can really be a, a big bonus of a virtual family office. And then six, uh, there can be some customized solutions. So virtual family offices can tailor their services a lot of times to meet specific needs of, of each client. Because we recognize two families are never alike. That's why we create a personalized wealth management plan that addresses your unique circumstances. Uh, and that comes along with sometimes looking outside the box uh, of what your normal financial advisor is going to do to really be able to, to work together with that team and create a customized solution for you. As a physician, you are dedicated to helping your patients. So who's helping you with your own financial health? I'm Brent Bowden, a certified financial planner and author of a new book, The Physician's Financial Checkup. In my book, I'll show you how to take control of your finances, set realistic goals, create a budget that works for you, invest in your future, protect your assets, and much more. So if you're ready to achieve financial freedom, then the Physician's Financial Checkup is the book for you. You can order it now on Amazon Kindle, paperback, and audiobook coming soon. Check the link below in the description to get your copy today of the Physician's Financial Checkup, financial advice and education for medical professionals. Now, virtual family office isn't for everybody. So let's talk about a couple of the disadvantages of a virtual family office. Um, Obviously, we talked as a positive that physical presence was one of those, but it can also be a detractor. Uh, there's certainly something nice about having all those professionals in one location. You're going to typically pay for that uh, at a much higher cost, but being able to, to walk across the office rather than make a phone call may be a little easier. And so for some clients, that's a concern. They may prefer to have more in-person meetings, uh, local interactions. And so lack of that physical preference or presence could be an issue. Um, there can be coordination challenges as well. So obviously with a virtual team, there is an increased risk of communication gaps or misunderstandings um, between those communication tools. So that the experience and protocols that are in place for that virtual family office to be effective and communicate and collaborate are essential to minimizing those type of issues. That can be done pretty easily as long as there's kind of a, a, a rules of engagement, I guess is better to say. The third issue there can be is cost. So typically, family offices are fairly expensive to run, maintain. You're paying salaries uh, for each specialist to be able to do that, in addition to you know, some additional goals and things that are built in. Plus, there's not a, a quantity of scale. And so those can be fairly expensive to run. Um, virtual family offices typically are more cost effective. But because you are engaging multiple professionals, um, there can be some times when, you know, depending upon the level of service that's required, that may be a little bit more expensive on the upfront or uh, when things would change. But overall, that tends to be more cost effective uh, and also more beneficial for the client because of the, the shared information that's there. Which brings me to the fourth one. Uh, there are cybersecurity risks today. So as those virtual family offices increase their reliance on technology, there is a higher need for robust cybersecurity measures to protect sensitive financial information about our clients than ever before. And so making sure that there's a two-factor authentication uh, and, and a number of other cybersecurity uh, details behind the scenes can be huge. So making sure that your virtual family office has those measures in place is key. 
So now that we've covered kind of some of the, the positives of why a virtual family office may be beneficial for you and a couple of detractors, let's talk about who should be on your virtual fi family office team. So when we're talking about high net worth medical professionals, each person is going to play a vital role in ensuring that the financial needs are met comprehensively for that client. So obviously a financial advisor or a wealth manager needs to be in the room. They can oftentimes be a primary point of contact. They will help create that customized holistic financial plan. And a lot of times act somewhat as a quarterback for the entire process. Uh, typically there's daily involvement. Uh, if, you know, not at least weekly or monthly involvement with the client. And so a, a good wealth manager is going to be the person that probably acts more as a quarterback of that team. Now, a lot of times that wealth manager is also going to have an investment manager behind them. So somebody that's responsible for the day-to-day -day, uh, client investments, ensuring that they align with your risk tolerance, your financial goals, are there changes in the market we need to be aware of? And so having a, a really good investment team or manager behind that uh, is certainly going to factor in big time. Um, the third one, obviously, a tax specialist, specialist is going to be key. So tax planning, both looking ahead at what's coming down the pipe, what, what we might think is coming, uh, but also obviously looking back at the, the current and past year uh, is super helpful from a overall virtual family office standpoint to be able to make sure that we're making the right tax strategy decisions. We're keeping in compliance, uh, ensuring that the client really maximizes what those tax efficiencies uh, and minimizing any liability that's there. So tax specialist is obviously a, a big key part of that. Uh, an estate planner can be huge. Now, this is kind of one of those people that we want them involved fairly regularly, but they may not be making a lot of actions, but they're going to focus on those strategies down the road of wealth transfer. So that's going to include wills, trusts, estate planning, uh, maybe philanthropic needs. So depending upon exactly uh, what the current assets are, that estate planner is going to be a key part. Uh, insurance expert is always a good piece to have on that virtual family office. That could be personal risks like um, property and casualty. It could be life, health, disability, long-term care risks. Uh, and it could also be business risks. So you may have multiple insurance experts, depending upon what you need as a family to help you with your risk management, the selection of insurance policies, and protect your assets and mitigate any, any liability issues. So that could be one or multiple insurance experts on that team. There also may be additional legal counsel as well. So uh, you may have a, a business legal counsel if you own property, own a business, um, just making sure that those legal matters are handled correctly and in the best interest of the client and the, the team. Uh, obviously, there's multiple players that are going to be kind of involved in exactly what that looks like. A couple other ones you may not think about very often, uh, and these tend to get a little bit on the higher end, but you may have a lifestyle manager. So a lifestyle manager is going to handle some various non-financial aspects, travel arrangements, concierge services, uh, philanthropic guidance. You know, they may have kind of a laundry list of things that they do that are a little bit outside of what the normal uh, financial advisor or wealth management firm does. But those are some of the additional pieces that can be brought in for somebody who maybe has a large family and they like to travel, they don't want to have to do all the work. It's brought in kind of on a one-off basis. Uh, if that happens regularly, maybe they, they stick around to help as needed. The other one is a, a family governance advisor. So this one really facilitates effective communication and collaboration within the family uh, regarding not only financial matters, but uh, you know, multi-generational matters. So some of the really high net worth clients really like to have kind of a game plan. Uh, how do you govern within the family? What are the goals of the family uh, while still leaving things to the younger generations to be able to, to understand, get involved um, so that we don't have any of the shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves issues of that first generation making money, second generation helping spend it, third one uh, finishes it all off. That's certainly been one of the nice things of watching uh, families like the Rockefellers that multiple generations now have benefited from some of those early generations uh, money management. And a lot of that has to do with the way that the family's governed. And so that is a huge part of multi-generational wealth management planning that some virtual family offices will also include. So in a virtual family office, we've covered all of those that may not be everybody that you want to have uh, in your team. There may be some, some outliers, but uh, that covers a majority of the ones that we 
typically think of as we're meeting with high net worth clients. And those professionals will all work collaboratively, collaboratively together uh, to create that comprehensive financial plan, make sure that it aligns with your specific goals, uh, your family's needs, and really make sure that it's both flexible, but customized because that approach can be a really attractive option for people who want to make sure that they can make adjustments over time. And a lot of times having all those pieces of the puzzle shared together makes such a big impact for the family to have that financial management that is specialized and tailored to you. Uh, it can be a, a really big plus for families and it's one that we don't think of a lot, but maybe you've thought about adding some pieces to your team. Have you ever seen how often your financial advisor talks to your tax professional or to your estate planner? Um, typically that is probably fairly low by putting together a virtual family office, or if you, you meet an advisor who has some of those advisors that he works with, uh, the professionals, you know, like we do that, I think that can make a huge impact on the longevity and financial success of your virtual family office. So as we wrap up today, I, I really want to appreciate you joining us for the Physicians Financial Checkup Podcast. Uh, if you're considering a virtual family office, be sure to do your due diligence. Find professionals that have great experience, uh, love serving the unique needs of, of medical professionals. That's something that you can certainly reach out to us and we can help direct uh, you in your area, whether you want something local or fully virtual. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, uh, leave a review and share it with your colleagues. We'll be back soon for more valuable insights on managing your finances as a medical professional. But until then, take care and stay healthy. Thank you for listening to the Physician Financial Checkup Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favorite platform and leave a review. You can also find more information on brentbowden.com. The information contained in this podcast is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as financial advice. The opinions expressed are solely those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of any other individual or organization. You should carefully consider your investment objectives, risk tolerance, and time horizon before making any investment decisions. If you are seeking financial advice, you should consult with a qualified financial advisor who can assess your individual circumstances and needs.